My name is Nick Franchino, and I am still your moderator this morning, and we're going to get right into it with uh, Craig Gooch from SOMAS. Uh, he's a senior uh, geospatial business consultant for them. I've known Craig for many years, come to our GIS Day event uh, in the past, and uh, we're looking forward to, to his talk today about strategic planning for enterprise asset management. So Craig, really good to see you. And uh, it's all yours, take it away. All right, thanks, Nick. Good to see you as well. I appreciate the opportunity to support LA County GIS Day. It's always fun and uh, seeing that all that uh, data about Mars and Mars mapping is really cool. So uh, let's jump into asset management. I am uh, feel really fortunate to have been involved for decades in public works uh, and uh, utility GIS mapping. Uh, that has led to organizational improvements in those uh, agencies and uh, a lot of improvements in technology such as uh, web and mobile GIS, um, new data collection technologies and asset management technologies. However, um, asset management best practices are really not embraced broadly across many organizations. Uh, business processes are often antiquated. There's um, large use of paper forms, spreadsheets, uh, reliance on individual uh, people within the organization to really know how the uh, assets are managed. And uh, this is a result of solutions evolving over time within these organizations using technologies that they happen to have available. Uh, multiple systems exist and uh, this contributes to data uh, replication, inconsistencies, and really the biggest challenge is the inability to organize this information in an enterprise view. Um, additionally, practices are often siloed within work divisions such as uh, the water group or stormwater or the roads division or the urban forestry group. Uh, and then they're not coordinating as they could at a higher level. So there is a better way to do things. Uh, asset management best practices abound. Their standards, organizations, software uh, solutions to, to do all this. Um, so what is what I think is needed is asset management makeover in some of these organizations to evaluate the existing uh, setting, reimagine what, how public works and utilities can be managed and develop a roadmap to reap those benefits. So in this presentation, I'll, I'll um, first focus on asset management system characteristics and then jump into the planning process. Uh, so asset management um, is, is about, in the context I'm talking, physical assets, public works assets, roads, streets, sewers, and so forth. And um, really the benefits of implementing an asset management as identified with the ISO standard for asset management include improved financial performance, asset uh, investment decisions are improved, reduced risks, improved services and outputs, um, demonstrating the organization has social responsibility, compliance, um, improving the reputation of the organization, improving efficiency, and being more sustainable in your asset management practices. So it's, it's very broad and important. Um, I've had the fortune to work with uh, Streets uh, LA uh, with their asset management program that they're evolving. And I've got a couple of slides here outlining it, but you can see the um, asset valuation of $16 billion replacement value for streets in Los Angeles city. Uh, tremendous uh, asset value there. And um, what uh, Streets LA is doing, looking at a very broad scope to ensure asset life cycle, engaging uh, all divisions within the organization, including engineering, construction, maintenance and enforcement. And um, they have uh, a, a, an array of management functions that they're uh, addressing for the full life cycle of, of the assets and managing them throughout. So the concept of life cycle is important in asset management. It, it involves uh, multi-steps of uh, throughout assets, starting with uh, asset planning, design and construction, commissioning, and then the long cycle of operations and maintenance, rehabilitation and replacement, and in some instances like bridges and other assets, decommissioning. 
the um, I want to highlight this long section here, and this is um, for rehabilitation and uh, routine operations and maintenance. This may be where the highest costs are, and asset management or work management solutions can help uh, achieve that. Streets LA, uh, looking at implementing asset management for their entire program, uh, is forecasting very large financial benefits of five to 10 million for improved efficiencies and over $100 million in long term asset life cycle savings. So it's a very big deal. Uh, but beyond that, also reduced risk um, of uh, personal injury and liability and uh, the ability to drive their decision making processes with data. So these are is a good example with Streets LA in terms of their vision for asset management and how it can improve the organization. Um, the street right away is a complex area, but many public agency assets are located in the right of way. And so I bring this up as a complex situation. There's many asset classes in the right of way, both above ground and below ground. There are um, lots of organizations involved being uh, public and private organizations. So if we looked at optimizing asset management in the right of way space, we would be challenged with integrating work activities across those various asset classes, across multiple organizations and divisions within those organizations. That would result in um, better planning and execution of, of asset maintenance, construction, better planning, uh, less, less disruption, improved customer service and greater operational efficiency. That's a pretty high bar to reach. Um, but I think it's something that we all ought to be thinking of in our cities about how to optimize the uh, right of way space. But to get there, um, organizations and their asset management units are going to need to uh, increase their individual performance so that whatever uh, a paving group does, they do it better uh, and that they're looking at entire life cycle optimization then they'd be in a state to join in for more advanced coordination. Um, so data-driven processes are important. And so a key, key aspect of um, the asset management program is to be uh, driven by data, to be proactive versus reactive, work on the things that matter, um, leverage that investment, improve efficiency, have organizational agility, and um, this concept of sustainability is, is embedding those maintenance practices and best practices that follow the policies of the organization directly within the software systems that are used. Um, the executive director at Streets LA, uh, he strives to have a, a more efficient uh, operation across all their divisions uh, so that there's an orderly progression of services provided to the citizens. And that is street trimming first, then sidewalk repairs, paving and then landscaping work. So it's very coordinated and organized. That is no small feat for 11,000 miles of roads um, and thousands of work orders that occur every year. Some of the things that uh, enterprise asset management system uh, answers are these that are listed on the screen. Uh, you know, where are my assets? How many do I have? What are the condition? What work do I have scheduled? What have I completed? How is the workload distributed? How many crews do I need? What's my investment levels I need? All those types of questions um, are data rich uh, or data hungry, and they need to be driven by a organized system that supports it. Uh, EAMS is often a integration of multiple systems and solutions. The functions, um, the basic functions are asset inventory often, and most um, uh, best practice is GIS for that. Uh, work requests, uh, performing inspections, work orders, and having work order task groups so that complex work activities can be managed, tracked, and, and follow a, a, a best practice process. Uh, but also resource planning, monitoring, budgeting, uh, and reporting. And so, um, the uh, systems that are in place uh, 
really our GIS for asset inventory, uh, computerized maintenance management system, which is really the work management, work order management activities. But beyond that, there's a lot of other things. The 311 system for customer service requests, uh, data from GIS hub, um, the pavement management system, scheduling activities on complex construction projects, human uh, resources data for cost tracking, uh, financial records for purchasing and procurement, and then performing analytics and having the ability to um, uh, perform uh, various reporting and, and uh, provide data for decision making. So let's talk about the scope of asset management. Um, the key thing for an asset management program is that supporting the organizational organization strategic plan. This graphic from the Institute of Asset Management identifies uh, the life cycle uh, delivery process that I touched on for Streets LA, but how that interacts with risk management, um, asset data, strategy, and plans. And the most important piece is on the left, that red box, that highlights uh, that people and the organizational structure are really the essential elements that make this successful. So let's move into planning with the background on asset management. Um, the planning process uh, is important. It, it provides an opportunity, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, to move from a, a state of um, say lower capability to higher capability in an organized fashion. The key uh, elements in the planning process are to identify existing shortcomings of the process. So review what the current environment is and analyze that. Identify opportunities. That's the envisioning the future and how that might be, um, the future might be developed better, better tools, better methods. Quantify those benefits so that it's clear why you wanna move forward and uh, put together a roadmap. The roadmap provides the guidance for step-by-step -step progression of the organization. This information is then shared across the organization to develop buy-in and help um, establish a, a program direction that's supported at all levels from the field workers all the way up to the executive board level. Um, other elements in the plan include um, Clarification of what asset management program mission and purpose is, a governance program that makes decision make, uh, has inclusive decision making, and it's clear how those decisions are made. And uh, um, most importantly, though, is engagement of the executives who are going to sign the check and, and approve this to go forward. All the changes that would occur, not just funding, but also organizational change and expectation management. Planning, however, is, is not really a simple process. Yeah, it, it's finding a, a balance between these elements of the planning process that include the people, um, field workers, directors, division heads, uh, advocates, and those that uh, uh, want to see status quo continue for one reason or another. So we've got to deal with the people side of things, but also the data elements, the asset inventory, data uh, asset conditions, project plans, permits, budgets. There's lots of data components that go into this. And then process, how, how do things get done? Uh, what are the workflows and so forth? Um, planning is not a deterministic system. And what I mean by that is that the inputs that we receive through the initial needs assessment and evaluation shape the outcomes. In that way, each plan needs to be tailored to the conditions of a given in industry and the maturity level that organization is at at the time. So the concept of maturity, and this is a um, idea of uh, competency level. Um, in this diagram, uh, I, I like this one, it's put out by Genesis Solutions that is a um, asset uh, management program for industry. But um, this shows five levels of maturity, working from a, a reactive at the lower end where um, they fix after fail to a higher level uh, of planned, then predictive uh, maintenance, and then improve reliability and enterprise level uh, competency where they have really uh, optimal execution. I note that, 
the um, five minutes? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Note that the people, process, systems, and technologies all have influencing pieces in this. So when we're doing the planning, we want to take a look at these, these factors, um, uh, so understanding the maturity level of the organization so that you right-size the plan for the organization. What's the culture? What experiences they've been through? And if you're a leader here, what are your ability to influence the organization? And so take all these things into account to align it to that particular organization's needs. So planning um, is, is about the people process and technology and putting together a roadmap. Um, these elements should be included uh, or considered in, in a strategic plan for enterprise asset management uh, starting with uh, understanding the existing environment and ending up with a, a roadmap and securing executive sponsorship. So let me touch on the planning steps for a few minutes here. Um, the, the process that I've laid out here is, is kind of simple and you can adapt to this, but uh, basically initiation is engagement process, addressing the people, get the people on board, let them know what's expected, know how they'll be involved. Let it be clear how they're, they're gonna have a chance to have their input taken. Um, the needs assessment is where we get involved very uh, at a detailed level, looking at uh, user processes, having interviews with them, looking at the data sets, the systems that are currently in use, listening to areas that they think improvements are needed, and then moving into an opportunity and analysis process uh, phase that evaluates based on best practices and uh, general knowledge of the work processes, how the system can be improved with a improved software system, improved procedures, training, and so forth. And at that point, you've got a, a direction set. Uh, you need to look at the organization. Are there organizational changes needed in terms of governance, oversight, reorganization? Um, and then ultimately putting that together in a um, implementation plan. So the steps are uh, progressive and incremental and include engagement along the way, which is very important. Uh, it, uh, this is uh, in Streets LA, we went through in, uh, in the needs assessment to really understand what's needed is, was to engage the work groups and create the uh, workflows that are around all their process steps identifies roles and responsibility, handoff points between people, gaps and so forth. And then uh, map to 2B process. And the 2B process has this one band here, which is the automation process for computerized maintenance management. And so it shows where the efficiencies are and then benefits are identified that can be evaluated across the aggregate of all these workflows. Uh, benefit areas. Uh, beyond uh, what I mentioned for uh, Streets LA, which were huge, uh, Colorado Springs, for example, uh, they saw overall investment ROI in 12 to 18 months, uh, half a million dollars in labor efficiency improvement, and 46% uh, reduction in costs, direct costs. Um, this other, other group that works on industrial asset management identified uh, five to 10% reduction in inventory costs, uh, two to 6% increased asset availability, up to 40% reduction in reactive maintenance, 35% safety, 35% productivity, and 15% life ex uh, extension of equipment. Just think how this would apply within your organization using these principles. So uh, kind of wrapping up here, the uh, critical success factors are um, assure you have a, a GIS champion on board, within the organization who has organizational influence, but the field workforce in asset management is one of the most critical success factors is having them on board. Uh, huge impacts in productivity with them using uh, automation and uh, collecting data in the field and uh, having access to information to improve their work efficiencies overall. So I challenge you uh, for those organizations that need improvement, why not act now? Um, a lot of work needs to be done. We, there's uh, more needs to be done than, uh, with uh, smaller budgets. A lot of organizations are facing uh, staff reductions and uh, 
also staff retention, the other side of the coin, younger workforce want automation. So there's a, there's a lot of opportunities to move ahead and uh, really good reasons to do it at this time. So in close, uh, kind of a checklist, align, make sure the EMS objectives are aligned with the organizational objectives, shoot for a sustainable program um, rather than a one-off. Uh, many organizations are dealing with the consequences of short-term vision with solutions. So think in the long-term. Uh, consider other organizations uh, as you go forward where you may be interacting with them. Um, I know the city has uh, uh, PWRS uh, for coordination in the right-of-way, for example. And so they're looking progressively. So know your competencies and weaknesses as a manager. Uh, address business needs right up front and plan to measure and report after execution. So I hope this uh, brief summary and outline on EAMS and, and the planning process is helpful for you. Uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have any uh, questions or comments after this uh, session. Nick, back to you. Great. All right. Well, thank you, Craig. Do me a favor. Yeah, we'll we'll leave that up there for a minute. We won't switch the slide yet, and we'll just uh, talk a little bit, and we'll get into these questions. Really appreciate it. Strategic planning is so important um, in GIS, and and you can see what it its needs here in, in enterprise asset management. So we're going to get to the question uh, right now. We have one question. If somebody else queue up another question for Tory drivers at the regional or national levels for developing and following through asset management plans. Hey, Nick, could you please repeat that? I had an interruption in audio. Sure, no problem. Do you know of any regulatory drivers at the regional or national levels for developing and following through asset management plans? Yeah, um, I don't know about regulatory, but there's plenty of guidelines on in the uh, transportation arena. I think a lot of the transportation funds uh, are dependent on the organizations who accept those funds to have an asset management program in place. And then uh, GASB 34 uh, reporting requires uh, or encourages um, an asset management program to manage asset valuations and depreciation, for example. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Um, do we have any other questions? Uh, Steve, I know Steve was maybe going to come on board. He's uh, I do <laughs> he's on strategic planning anyway. Yeah. So sure. So Craig, uh, interesting talk. I'm curious. Um, you mentioned ROI in your talk at a couple of points, and I know just in general terms, the calculating ROI on GIS-based projects has always been a challenge for a lot of organizations. Do you have any observations or comments on how you're getting ROIs and how you convince management and decision makers that those are real? Yeah, um, so uh, we really use a bottoms up approach on the ROI analysis and um, we evaluate and estimate current costs of services delivered and then itemize the opportunities for efficiency improvements, direct cost savings, uh, risk avoidance that can be translated to cost and enumerate those at individual work team levels. Those then get aggregated upwards into an enterprise report. And we actually um, put a factor on that to reduce that benefit, numeric benefit um, as a uncertainty factor. And, and um, basically it tells a good story and we have the division managers stand up behind those, stand behind those numbers and say, yeah, we believe we can do this. And so that's generally the way in advance. Then once implemented, the program should track actual costs and then compare those to uh, pre-implementation costs to compare the differences. Great, thank you. All right, Craig. Well, I think I'm looking at the time. Uh, we're going to make a few announcements, but one of the things I want to say too is remember you can go to Somus's page in our exhibit hall, and I know there's some links to some of the projects that they're working on, some of the things that he described today. So thank you, Craig. I really appreciate it. Thanks for your support of our event. Absolutely.